Welcome to Big Sim. Complicated. It's human. Obviously. It's crazy out there, and those sirens sound like a loop. I don't like them. And they almost saw me. I had to turn on the molecular stealth mode to avoid their... their... Their raid... Oh yeah, I mean, their you-know-what. What's happening out there? There are weird people running around on vehicles with red and blue lights that make that looping sound and all sorts of flying machines. What's going on? Oh, you're right. It's today. The president is visiting for the campaign. What's a president? It's simple. It's the head of the government. What's a government? It's simple. It's a group of politicians that, as the name says, governs a country. What's a politician? What do they do? Oh, X, I wish someone knew. It's complicated, as I told you. They are supposed to organize the justice system to keep it fair, make sure the economy is healthy and growing, defend the interests of the people of their country, and, above all, make sure they get re-elected. Oh, interesting. Humans governed by other humans. Is it how it works on this planet? Yeah. Mostly, yes. See, most people are busy living their lives. They have to deal with day-to-day -day problems like being busy working, busy buying groceries, busy getting a house and a car, busy dealing with their partners, and super busy growing their kids. They are very busy. They have no time to deal every day with all things needed to manage a country, not to talk about the crisis it might face during emergencies. So they rely on a group of people dedicated to manage the country as a whole, the politicians. Oh, I see. Busy, 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 super busy. It sounds like a very complicated job. Oh yes, it is. You have to understand economics, finance, technology, law, culture, medicine, corporate and government organization structures, and of course be aware of what people think, what they like and what they need, not only right away, but in the long term. Oh, they have to be very smart and have been studying a lot to be able to be good at that, right? Um, yeah, they should, yes. What program do they need to graduate from to become good at all those things you mentioned? None. Oh, do they use the virtual Pemex neural implant to access all that knowledge without having to slowly learn it as normal humans do? The what? No. Are they born with those abilities getting them from the environment through what I think you call epigenetics? I found it very interesting when I was studying the human DNA evolution as I was preparing to come here. Epigenetics. It rings a bell, but I don't quite remember how that works. It's the study of heritable phenotype changes that do not involve alterations in the DNA sequence, meaning that there are functionally relevant changes to the genome that do not involve a change in the nucleotide sequence. Um, you kind of lost me here. Your DNA stays the same, but the way it's read changes. Oh, oh, you mean the whole nature versus nurture, Darwin versus Lamarck thing? Maybe, I guess. Oh, then no. That has nothing to do with politicians being good at what they do. Okay, so I'm the one lost now. If they don't go to school to study and prepare to do their super complicated job, they don't learn it in some other way, how do you select them to know they are the best for the job? It depends where. Of the 195 countries on this planet, we are among the 21 privileged countries, almost 13%, which is governed by what we call a government of the whole people. These are the ones that are based on freedom and liberty of speech and are the result of hundreds of years of evolution to create this system to defend our ideals of social equality. Long time ago, most places were governed by few people with very strong central power who could basically do whatever they wanted. And that did not work well. Obviously. Obviously. Nowadays, instead, in the countries with our government system, we select the politicians by a method called elections. And the ones that get elected 
end up being the politicians in charge of the country. We are really privileged to live in one of them. Oh, I see. Privileged. How do elections work? Do you scan their brains and DNA to look for patterns that would make them good leaders and then put them through tough problem-solving situations to simulate how they would behave in the real scenario? Um, forget about the scans. But the second part is kind of what is supposed to happen during the electoral campaign. Is that where you give them the test? How do you score them? Actually, there's no real test. They are asked what they would do regarding important matters like education, economy, taxes, justice, and so on, and they answer what they think they would do. Who evaluates the answers? Each person who can vote in that country. And if they like it, they will decide to vote for them. And the politicians with more votes win and become the governing party for a while. When you say if they like it, do you mean that there are standard unified criteria shared by the entire population so that they agree as a group on how to evaluate them? Mm, no. I see. No alignment. And when you say someone who can vote, do you mean the ones that have passed a specific test to check that they are qualified to evaluate matters of economics, finance, technology, law, culture, medicine, corporate and government organization structures, and that they know how to evaluate the ability of the politicians to answer the questions? Mm, no. Usually, they just have to be old enough, not be mentally ill, or not too much, I guess, and not have committed particular crimes. I know what you're about to say. If you know it already, you can answer, so we save some time. Mm, no, I'm not gonna take the risk. What now? So, there are people who are not tested to be qualified in any of the subjects needed to govern the country, who go to the elections to become the politicians in charge. All the other people that are not tested either and are too busy, busy, super busy, to prepare to evaluate them, vote for them. Then the politicians who got more votes become the government. <sighs> I could have saved us some time. Well, yes, your summary is pretty accurate. I see. Busy and not qualified. Are you sure you are not missing anything in the selection process about how the politicians answer the questions from the people? X, it doesn't really matter, because no matter what the politicians say during the campaign, nobody will guarantee that they will do it for real if they get elected. I'm not sure I follow. Uh, I think I might have dug my own grave. Sorry if I said something wrong. I do not want you to die before my research is over. Sorry, it's only a figure of speed. Hey, what do you mean before your research is over? Anyway, what I meant is, do you remember what was the thing that good politicians have to be good at more than anything else? Getting re-elected? Yeah, that and understand what people think and need. So during the elections, they focus on the things people care the most about. But when they get elected, they have to deal with a very complex system that, usually, they cannot easily influence right away to get immediate results. And even if they have been genuine in their promises to the people, there are things outside of their control, like global economical cycles. Or the situation might simply have changed from the elections and they have to do things differently. To get re-elected? Well, yeah, that too. I see. Before, you said it only works like this in the 13% of privileged countries. How does it work in the more evolved ones then? Uh, more evolved, do you mean the other countries? Yes. 53 of them are places where, although elections do take place, Citizens are cut off from knowledge about the activities of those who exercise real power because of the lack of civil liberties. 34 are still in the middle of a transition, so it's not very simple to describe how things work there. And lastly, the other 59 countries, which include almost 40% of the world population, have governments based on strong central power to preserve the political status quo and reductions in the rule of law, separation of powers, and voting. Strong central power? Like the ones from hundreds of years ago? Yeah, meaning they don't really bother to ask people what they think about what they do, they simply do it. Does that mean they make decisions faster? Yeah, I know, it's terrible. Wait, what? 
Yes, but they don't really care if those decisions are good or bad for the people they govern. They could simply take them for their own personal interest and incentives. Oh, I see. They don't care. Like the ones that get voted and then do something different than what they promised? Uh, uh yes, but see, they don't really have elections there. Oh, I see. No scans or tests there either. So how do they decide if they are fit to govern? Do you recall I always told you that nobody was able to build a big and strong enough army yet? Yes. Well, they kind of managed to build one that is strong enough to keep just their territory under their full control. So nobody can oppose their ideas and they can do whatever they want. What if the people they govern disagree and challenge them? Mm, they get killed or worse. Unless, of course, they are able to build an even bigger and stronger army than the ones who govern and before being caught and killed. Oh, killed because they disagree? And these are the ones that are more evolved? Hey, I never said that. You did. What about the other countries? All these don't add up to 195. Trust me, you don't want to know. What government system do you have on your planet? Government system? Yeah, how do you allocate resources, decide what you can or cannot do, decide what to build or what to do as a society? Those problems were solved long before I came into existence. The boxes I told you about are reusable and new members of our species are produced only when old boxes have not been used for enough time to start working again. So we are not competing for resources. Then, during our time, we can do whatever we want to get points for what we do. So the individuals that contribute more to our species' advancement get more resources allocated to keep doing even more of that. And we periodically scan all individuals to see what they are better at so they can be allocated, if they want, to building or serving more in the things that give them more points. What about the ones that don't want or are not able to help your society? We don't build them. Oh, okay. What about the ones that are already existing and for whatever reason, they don't end up contributing that much. We dismantle them. Wait, what? Really? No. How was it? I'm working on the humor thing you told me I should improve. <sighs> yeah, okay, yes, y you got me, X. Good work on that. But still, what do you do with them? They are not that many anymore. Everyone wants to get the point, so they put a lot of energy into that. But for the few that are not able to contribute, we don't do anything about it. They just keep existing, but don't gain any points anymore. You keep talking about these points. What are they? In your language, the name would translate as vocation tokens. Most of us are born with a desire to get as many as we can of them. I'm getting a lot of points for this research on your multicellular pre-enlightenment species, for instance. Mm, but what can you do with the points? Can you exchange them for something else? No, but they tell you how much what you do is contributing to your species. Okay, okay, I get it. You built a society where everyone is so cool. Mm, our temperature is just regulated as a function of the place where we are. I didn't mean that... Never mind. There is still something I don't understand, though. Let's say all of your species wants to contribute to the global advancement. How do you decide what direction your projects need to take to advance? Because even with your fancy lemniscate box, you are still bound to the time it takes to accomplish things. So who decides what to invest the time on? Oh, that's simple. The arborescence does that. What's this arborescence? It's simple. As the name says, it's a polyquantum virtual tree simulator that explores all the possible options and decides which one is best. I see what you did there. Meaning? Everything that happens in the universe has consequences, and those consequences have other consequences, like an infinite tree of possibilities. Before Enlightenment, we were not looking far enough in the future to predict the effects of our actions on things that would have happened a few thousands years later. We were looking only a few hundred years ahead. So short-sighted. And we almost got extinct because of that. So the ones who survived built the arborescence to explore all the possible consequences of our actions and simulate every possible scenario so we could go into the right direction way before we got into the wrong branch of the tree 
and it was too late to fix it. Hmm, okay, so short-sighted. But even so, you need to define what a good direction looks like versus a bad one. Yes. As I told you, the system is very complicated. There are parameters that define how to preserve energy and matter and convert one into the other without... Okay, okay, okay. Your head is already swelling and I know how that goes. You can stop this part before my nose starts bleeding again. One last thing though. Even if you have this very fancy model, how do you align the direction society needs to take as a whole with guaranteeing at the same time the happiness of the single individuals? What's happiness? If you want to make the human race great again, subscribe to this channel, share it with everyone but politicians, and leave us a review. Vote for X. <coughs> Hey, Bo, do you really still think I should run for president? Sure. Well, we would have to give you a look more human and maybe a deeper voice, but sure. With all your knowledge, resources, and selflessness, you will for sure save this planet. What would be the first thing you would do? Abolish palindromes. That's, That's exactly, exactly what, what it is. is.